everyone and welcome to another episode of Dre in the Kitchen. I'm excited today. It's, let me see, it was pretty cool here in Central Florida. Cool for us is very <laughs> different than what it is for my friends in the Northeast and all over the place. So in today's episode, we're going to do something that's comforting, that may take a little while to make, but the infinite possibilities of what you could do with leftovers is absolutely spectacular. So I bought this beautiful chuck roast and I'm going to show you how we're going to do it. So let's talk about a little bit of the ingredients that we're going to need. So I took about four of these large sized onions. These are sweet onions. I love the sweetness that they give the dish. So we're going to go ahead and chop these. I started a little bit here. So we're going to go ahead and get this going. One of the things you always need is make sure your knife is sharp because that makes half the battle so much easier. I go ahead and I peel this top layer off because it's sometimes on the thin side. So I like to keep life a lot easier. Always keep a handy garbage bowl to your side. Just makes life so much simpler. And I'm wearing contacts today. So surprisingly, there's always this myth that if you wear contacts, you don't cry. I've heard all sorts of scenarios, all different types of things. If you have a secret to not crying from chopping onions, then go ahead and drop it in the comments when this video is done, because I would love to try some of it some of your ideas and let's see if they work. So go ahead. And we want a lot of flavor. These onions are gonna give us such delightful flavor. Slice them. This is not a fine chop. We're not doing anything of that nature because this is literally gonna cook in. It's gonna braise in a 350 degree oven. So this is completely ready to go. So there's that. We have carrots here. I took one ginormous carrot that I had Chopped it up into little quarters. They're ready to go. I have seven cloves. These are massive. They almost look like elephant garlic. Chopped up and ready for the side. So we have that. We have some red wine. I'm using some cherry tomatoes from Muti. It's my favorite Italian brand. No, I'm not sponsored, but it is my favorite brand. I'm gonna add some red wine in here and we're gonna use, this is C'est La Vie. It's a Merlot Reserve from Europa Village in Temecula, California. And then I'm going to show you my little trick because I like to use fresh herbs. So I always keep cheesecloth around because we're going to create a bouquet garni. What's a bouquet garni? We're just going to put a couple different herbs in here because they're easy. They'll infuse with whatever you're making and it's easy to pull it out so you don't have them all over the place. So I have a bunch of fresh thyme. I have this, look at this beautiful rosemary. Put that in the center. I put some bay leaves in here. These are dried bay leaves, so I put three. So what I'm gonna do, in fact, let's fold this over a little bit. It'll release, and then you literally create a little a bouquet. Turn it upside down. I always have butcher's twine available, and you don't need a whole heck of a lot of it. I'll use my trusty knife here just to cut up a piece. And we're gonna wrap it. That's it. And then it's easy to fetch out of your sauce when everything is done at the very, very end. We'll do one more knot just for good luck and good measure. Let's get started cooking now. So I went to my butcher and they had these beautiful chuck roasts. So what I did is I took them, it's about two and a half pounds. I cut them up into cubes. It's almost gonna be, uh, we're braising this as if you were braising a beef stew. And look at how beautiful. I cut a little, I left a little bit of the fat because you want the fat. This is at room temperature. I left it out for about an hour because I did have them in the refrigerator. So now let's season with salt and pepper. Let's get all of these things ready. And then we're gonna season them. We season on both sides. So I'm using diamond kosher salt. I'm gonna make sure that you're seasoning. This is the start of something absolutely beautiful. Then let's add a little bit of pepper. Now I, you can use a pepper mill. I actually have mine freshly ground. I did it right before we started cooking for this video. Now let's turn them over because you know, I love, as Emerald used to say, I like my meat seasoned on both sides. Turn these guys over. These little pieces, put this to the side. And then we'll add salt. Now, I use diamond kosher specifically because it's not as salty as if I were using Morton's kosher salt. So if you'd like to have a video on different salts and how they affect food and your taste buds, let me know. 
we can definitely go ahead and start recording that. So I'm gonna put this to the side, let's get our Dutch oven and let's start having some fun. So here's our Dutch oven, let's turn our induction cooktop on. You know this is my favorite trusty friend. This will heat up in a matter of about 30 seconds and then we can get started on the beautiful browning of our meat. So when the meat is at room temperature, it will sear hopefully beautifully. So I'm gonna add different types of fats into my Dutch oven. I just did a little bit of clarified butter today. We're gonna add about two tablespoons of clarified butter. Why clarified butter? Because the milk solids are gone and it will, I'm gonna add a dot of extra virgin olive oil just for flavor. And you'll have a higher smoke point so you can get that beautiful sear. So let's put this at number eight. Give it about 15 to 20 seconds. And as soon as you see the oil glistening and moving around, you're ready to start searing. Our clarified butter is nice and glistening. The aroma is intoxicating, y'all. So we're gonna take a little piece. There's your sizzle. That's what you wanna hear. We're not gonna overcrowd the pan. We're gonna do this in batches because I don't want, if you overcrowd your pan, it's gonna end up steaming. And I don't want steam. I literally want a beautiful crust on these pieces of meat. And how do you know when it's time to turn your meat? When you put it down in a cast iron or your Dutch oven here, it's gonna give you resistance. It's almost like it's, as soon as it releases and it moves on its own, then you can go ahead and stir it. All right, so let's check it and see. See how that came off and it's beautifully brown on the bottom? Now we can flip it to the other side. They're looking absolutely beautiful. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of this meat going and then we'll get to the next step. But remember, don't crowd your pan. Give it enough time to sear both sides. You're not cooking it through, just sear it and we'll come back and put it all together. All right, so we've got, look at this beautiful browning. So let's go ahead and take this out. I have my trusty bowl here on the side. Now, I don't need to add any more oil. The oil that's left in there and that rendered out from the fat from the beef itself is what we're gonna use. So in go our onions. In go our carrots. I am not using celery. Let's go ahead and stir all of this around. I'm not adding any, well, I may add just a little dot of salt so that we're gonna let this sweat and render out before we deglaze. So we're gonna cook this in here with its fat for about, I'd say three to four minutes, maybe five, just so it can sweat out a little bit, release its juices, and then we'll add the next step. So these have sweat for about five minutes. I added just a dot of salt and some freshly ground black pepper. You can see the beautiful color, the caramelization that's happening. So that's exactly what you want. So now that this is cooked a little bit, we're gonna go ahead and add the garlic. Right, now, why did I add the garlic now as opposed to a little earlier? I did not want it to burn. I knew that it was gonna cook and I wanted to sweat those carrots and onions. So now we cook the garlic for about a good, I'd say 60 seconds. It's very aromatic and fragrant. So if you're cooking this, I promise you your whole house is smelling amazing at this point. So now that that's in there, I'm gonna go ahead and start adding about two tablespoons of tomato paste. We're gonna add that. So I use the tube cento, it's double concentrated. And I have probably about a good two tablespoons, maybe a tablespoon and a half left in here. And we're gonna stir all this up because you wanna cook this down a little bit. You wanna get rid of that raw flavor and you see how it beautifully transforms all your veg? That's what you want. So we're gonna leave this alone for 30 to 60 seconds and then we're gonna deglaze with, I would say about half a cup to three quarters of a cup of my red wine, it's a Merlot. Do you need to deglaze with a red wine? Absolutely not. You can use beef stock or vegetable stock, whatever you prefer. I do have trusty beef stock here, so we're gonna go ahead and use that. I'm gonna add in, this is my guesstimate of half a cup of wine. Let's raise the temperature a little bit. So when you add your wine, I'm gonna switch here to my flat spatula. You see how it's flat here? Because what I want is I'm scraping all of those brown bits at the bottom. 
you want every little bit like when you move this there should be no brown bits on the bottom because that's all additional flavor so I switched to this spoon or spatula I should call it so that I can get all those delicious bits look at that beautiful color just look at that look at that oh it's amazing all right it looks like I've scraped every little bit of fonds from the bottom fantastic all right I can go on my trusty sink now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add back I'm gonna put in my two cans of tomatoes this is what I'm using you do you have to use these no I just absolutely love them they're cherry tomatoes this is produced in Palma so Italy and look how beautiful they come out the little cherry tomatoes they're absolutely delish I'm using two cans. These are two 14 ounce cans. They add a beautiful sweetness that I absolutely love. Can you omit tomatoes? Absolutely. You don't need them. I add them because I love the flavor profile that they add. See how delicious? And there's no meat in here yet. None. All right. Let's add our meat back in. I'm gonna put nestle them all in there put that in there because now this is gonna once we add the liquid we're gonna braise this in our preheated oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit and you're gonna put in here whatever juice is collected on the bottom because that's all delicious flavor now I'm using a box of stock because I have not made homemade beef stock yet so it's gonna, you know, use a low, I use a low sodium option if it's available, because I prefer to control the saw. I'm probably just gonna use one quart, which is one container. You want just enough to cover, because when this goes in the oven, you may think, oh my goodness, that's a lot of liquid. You're right, it is. But this will reduce by, I would say a third, if not a little more, once it's nestled and in the oven. So I'm gonna bring this to a rapid boil. I'm not tasting it. We will taste it towards the end. And now we're gonna put our bouquet garni in here. Now that we've nestled all those beautiful things, now your fresh herbs, look at this. You stick it right here on the side, put them underneath, and they will flavor this delicious pot. Bring this to a boil, stick it in your oven, put a timer for about, I would say, two and a half to three hours. That should be beautiful where it pulls apart. And then I'll see you when I pull it out of the oven. So after three beautiful hours, this is what our product looks like. Take a look at that deliciousness. So I have it on a slight boil. I took out the bouquet garni and I did taste it. And you should always taste your food to see exactly what's missing. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of salt. So again, we're using diamond kosher. We'll start with about a teaspoon. We're going to add in our black pepper, another teaspoon, and I'm going to add a secret ingredient in here, something I did a couple days ago. I always write what I do and I label it, so I'm adding some roasted garlic. I think that flavor profile is going to be absolutely dynamite. So this is about a tablespoon's worth, because I was like, why not? So let's mix all that together. And I want you to see how beautiful, let me show you some of these pieces. Let me just blend in, mix all these beautiful things together. Look at how beautiful this beef is. So now let's just get that beautifully incorporated. And again, you can adjust this to your liking. If you want it, see this is beautifully, to me this is thick enough. If you want it a little thicker, you can add some xanthan gum if you're following the keto way or the low carb way. Or if you want to do the traditional, you can do a bermanier, which is mix a little bit of, of unsalted butter or salted butter to your taste. A little flour, put it in there, and it'll thicken up nicely. So now that that's all been added, let's go ahead and give this a taste and see if it needs anything else. That is dynamite. That is exactly where it needs to be. So let's go ahead and plate this up so you can see our final dish. 
So this is finally the culmination of all the hard work and everything we've done. I am so excited. It smells so good. Look at this deliciousness. Okay, you know I have to go in for a bite, right? Let's create the perfect. I, and the beautiful thing is I didn't strain anything. I just left everything in there and it is absolutely divine. So here we go. I want a little piece of carrot. I want a little piece of meat. A little onion. Let's see. Ooh. Mm, it literally fork tender. <laughs> mm. Oh my goodness. You've got to make this recipe. When you do, I promise you, everyone is going to absolutely love this. So I will see you guys. Make sure that you follow, like, comment, share, subscribe, do all the things. Help us get to that thousand subscribers, which I'm super excited about because the more content we create, the better our community grows. I love you guys. Stay tuned for the next episode. So long. I'm going to have some more. <laughs>